What's up YouTube, Silver Dragons here, and today I'm so incredibly excited to be talking to the legend himself, Hi-Ho Silver. How are you doing, my friend? Hi-Ho, I'm doing great. It's really cool to talk to you, man, after all these years. Thanks for uh, sitting down with me today. Absolutely. Now, for people who don't know Hi-Ho Silver, he's been around in the Silver community for much longer than I have. He's a pillar of not only the Silver stacking community, but also the Silver pouring community as well. Uh, first on YouTube, now on Instagram. He also owns Bunker Bullion. He makes some beautiful hand-poured silver. You have to check him out. Uh, but the topic of the video today is what you're now getting into, Hi-Ho. It's making your own silver minted coins slash rounds now obviously to be a coin it has to be backed by a sovereign nation uh, so what you're making is a round and you're making it uh, as sort of a collaboration uh, with another mint but what i wanted to do is sort of pick your brain because there's not a lot of information out there on the internet talking about you know how to make your own silver coins slash silver rounds and you know many people want to make them for different reasons maybe for their business uh for you know uh to pass down to their kids or what have you uh, but you've gone through this process can you talk about what it took to go from just design to the actual finished product um i can talk about how what i did kind of happened and went down and how typical that is um when people are pursuing a custom project is maybe accurate maybe somewhat different because um Intagio Mint had followed me back in the old days on YouTube and I had followed him and we were aware of each other's growth in the industry. And uh, I have really, really a lot of respect for the work that Intagio Mint does. And so I had this idea when I saw an engraving basically that had been carved into a sculpture at the base of a of a building in Washington, D.C. at the base of uh, some stairs. And I thought, wow, that's inspiring. And it was it was George Washington um, praying uh, at Valley Forge. It was uh, entitled The Prayer at Valley Forge. And it was based on an engraving, which was in turn based on a painting done at the end of the 19th century. And it just kind of moved me. And it... it uh, it's something that uh, I always wanted to do. And I just approached uh, Mark Bogani at Intaglio Mint and said, how would you like to work together on this? This is an idea I have. And, and I entitled it In God We Trust. And when you see the round, it's got In God We Trust prominently in the background field of the reverse. And it's just a stunning design. And uh, so... I presented the idea and the subject matter and the, the concept and asked him if he would like to work with me on it. And it, at that point, it might be different than other people's experience because it, it's actually a collaborative round, a dual branded piece. Um, and it was a real honor for me too, because when somebody puts their business logo next to somebody else's business logo that requires a lot of trust and uh it made me feel good that he had that kind of trust in how i operate and how i've handled myself uh as a person and so we have an intaglio mint bunker bullion piece it's actually bunker bullion's first minted release um that we work together to do the design and uh and he minted uh, and it's it's a stunning piece that's getting a lot of uh, praise as it's getting seen. Oh, yeah. Well, it, it's absolutely stunning. And, and I will show it off here uh, in the video so people can actually see it. And I do appreciate you uh, sending me one of these beautiful works of art to show off to everyone. I got number uh, 183 out of 250. And... Um, it's just absolutely gorgeous. Um, so you had the artwork, you had the idea, and, and you approached him. Um, how long did it take to really go from just an idea to like, hey, we are making the dies for these. Like, we're going. You know, how, what, how long did that take? Uh, we spent over a year, but it doesn't have to take that long. I wasn't in a hurry, and um, 
it was something that wasn't something that he usually does actually hasn't done this kind of dual branded piece with anybody uh, before. So it wasn't on a schedule for us, but um, I would suspect within, within six months, it can happen. It probably depends on how the dies are cut. So when I, I called him and I, I said, Hey, um, what do you think? And here's the, here's the artwork. The first step that we did was to take uh, take the subject matter and figure out how to frame it within a, a round and where that should be. Um, and so it, it gets uploaded into a computer graphics program. Uh, and then you can obviously move a circle around and zoom in and out until you find that that proper framing um, and what you can, because you want to be as close up to the, the actual subject, in this case, George Washington, um, as you can be without losing too much of the, the background interest. So that's, it seems simple, but it's, it's hard sometimes to find it. Well, so that uh, they did pretty quickly and we had a basic design. And then, so with that in the computer, uh, my understanding is you highlight those special points within the design to to bring forward at least the illusion of being forward uh, to add depth and to draw the eye to the point that the artist wants the eye to be drawn and so that was done um now was that something that he knows how to do or did you have to hire someone else to do that step all of the all of the work was done within his shop at Intaglio. Wow. And so um, Tony Grot, Anthony Grot, I believe is his main main guy and he's really skilled and talented. And I, I think he does the computer work too. I don't want to be inaccurate, but uh, they together did that. And then that gets sent in this case to a European engraver who's incredibly skilled and who remains anonymous because this engraving wasn't his design and artists don't like to put their names on things that aren't their creation. But he went to work on that, uh, on preparing the masters to cut the dies and just is, and you'll, you'll be able to attest and as people see it, it's as good if not better than anything the U.S. Mint has done any time recently with George Washington's likeness. I mean, it's it's well done likeness of George Washington. It's just beautiful. Yeah, uh, it looks deep- like him. I mean, you, you could you could tell just with the naked eye. I don't even need to put it under a microscope. It honestly looks a little um, high relief. Like it's not super high relief, but the relief mm-hmm. on it is certainly higher than what you'd expect on a bullion piece. Definitely, it's a it's a really strong strike. Uh, it's probably not technically high relief, but you're right. It is so well engraved, and the dies so well designed and executed in the the minting that it's it's really beautiful. And uh, so then the the dies get cut, and as that was happening on the obverse. Uh, we turned our attention to the reverse and he had a design that he was kind of working with, with uh, his company name in the background of the field. And I wanted the name of this piece to be called in God we trust. Um, so he put that in, I said, let's put, let's put that in, in the background of the field. And so behind our two logos, his on the left and mine on the right, you see in God we trust in there. And then it's got a, a nice rim with some stars and a two ounce Troy 999 fine silver and a bunker bullion up at the top. And uh, that was kind of designed and tweaked and took a little bit. Once you get those designs, then the producer will send you basically proofs. And uh, it's it's the computer rendering of this is basically what the design is. Mm -hmm. And then from there, uh, you go ahead and you 
cut the dyes and polish the dyes and prepare them. These uh, these rounds have a reeded edge except for the the small place where the numbering is. Um, I also did 50 other uh, smooth edged versions that have alternate finishes, um, gilded and antiqued and proofed, but the ones we did that are numbered. So then you have to kind of set a collar to do those and, and uh, all of those things kind of just add to the, the cost of, of the final production. Um, and once that's done, then you do a you do a test strike and you take a computer shot of it and you really zoom in and make sure that um, the die is performing how it should. And from there, it's a matter of scheduling with the mint. Here's when uh, this happens. That's where you pay for whatever that you're going to do. Uh, you can sometimes provide the silver. You can sometimes purchase the silver through them, which is what I did because a big company gets a little better deal on it than I do. Oh, I see. Yeah. Uh, if we could back up to the to the making of the dyes, do they do those themselves? Mm -hmm. Okay, and then the in God we trust. It is. It's very very. Like I can see it, I can easily read it, but is that like a special security feature almost? Like how small that is? Do they have to do anything special to be able to engrave it that small or was it just their normal equipment as far as you know? That's that's all just that's just all high quality equipment and dye production and striking ability. Yep. I think his logo, if you see, has a little bit of a security feature built into it. Uh, but the In God We Trust part is just a fine, detailed text. I see. But it's it's raised, and, and so it does kind of stand out and glimmer a little bit. Yeah, it looks really nice. Um, so how long did it take uh, from the dyes being produced and, and to say, okay, we now have the dyes. Uh, how long did you have to schedule out for them to be minted? And do they actually have a mint there? Do they press them mm -hmm. in-house, or where do, where do they do that? It, uh, he has a large operation in Denver, Colorado, and that's where they mint all of their pieces. And uh, that's where these were minted. Um, I don't know how typical our schedule was. I was preparing to go uh, present my, my poured things in Las Vegas in the end of August. So I wanted to make them available to the community before I, I went down there for a couple of days. So uh we kind of rushed it as quickly as we could to get through probably it was probably a couple of months maybe okay eight ten weeks eight ten weeks but i don't know how quickly or how slowly it would typically be that's what what it was and then he moved me up in the in the production schedule so that i could have enough time to do what i needed to do with them which was appreciated so i don't know the proper answer to that so if someone wanted to get something custom made, I mean, they'd be looking probably like a year out. I mean, it, it's going to take quite a while. It You can definitely do it faster. And there are people in the silver community, probably on YouTube, definitely on Instagram and Facebook that have minting operations where they do their own design and, and they do things faster. But uh, with Intalia, they're, they're busy producing their rounds that are are uh, successful. So fitting into his schedule was maybe a little more tricky than it would be with some mints. So I think you could probably, someone will correct us in, in the comments if we're wrong, probably within a couple of months, you could probably strike something with the way guys have such cool gear in their shops and in their house now where they can just, you know, make little 3D printed things and then make a make a die of them and, and do all that in-house. Uh, so it can happen quickly. It's it's a matter of how quickly and everything you do is, a, is an expense. Right. Now, I don't want to um, put you on the spot too much as far as like cost goes, uh, but I'm assuming you obviously have to pay for all of the silver and then the labor as well. Um, so when someone is thinking about get, getting something custom made, I mean, they're certainly not going to be paying spot or anything remotely close to that. I mean, it, it's quite a lot of uh, labor and time, right? 
like lots of things in this case in particular, you need to make enough of them so that you spread those costs out over more units. Um, so the way I chose my pricing was I wanted at the end of this limited mintage two ounce piece to have enough of uh, to fund a one ounce follow-up that would be a lower premium piece uh, for 2023. And we're almost there. So we're getting closer to selling this piece out. Uh, it will sell out probably within a month. Um, and then I should have the funds where we can do that, uh, that one ounce follow-up, same piece, only a one ounce version. Um, I really just find it inspiring. And I think it, it's a message that can be taken religiously, but it can also be taken patriotically. It could be taken psychologically, any number of ways, depending on what depth of analysis you want to, to go into. But I think it's inspiring. I think it's a message that, uh, that makes sense. Things in our country don't need to be going this way. Uh, we need to elevate some idea of what is good and collectively together work toward good as individuals. Um, and so I want as many people as possible to see and have this piece. And the one ounce version is how that'll, that'll happen. So pricing, it can be expensive. I would say um, probably double spot if you make a couple hundred of them. That's just a guess, but it's not inexpensive. And the time is a huge part of the cost. Yeah, I can imagine. And and also um, the dyes. Now, the dyes that you had made for this piece, do you have to remake, uh, obviously, the side that says 2023 and the weight and, and stuff like that, but like the George Washington side, can that handle enough strikes to go another thousand or, or how long do they last? I don't know. I guess we'll find out. I, I assume that yes, it can. Um, when they're, because off, I mean, so many of these will have mintages of multiple thousands. Um, and I can't imagine that they remake dies too often with the cost time and expense involved. But, um, I have not asked that specific question. And we'll, we'll find out. I anticipate maybe doing 500 of the one ounce, but, We'll see how that goes as we uh, we consider that for next year. And who knows, you know, if it catches on, I think the quality is terrific. People don't look to some retired old former YouTuber, you know, who pours silver uh, for a piece like this. But maybe someday they will. How cool would it be to have a series? And in God We Trust series, I think, would be, would be neat um, with various subject matter. Um, who knows? Well, I would love to see a series, and I, I love the subject matter. I love the In God We Trust. Uh, that's such a, a powerful thing that I feel like we've sort of lost in this country a little bit, and we definitely need to get back to that. Yeah, as far as making more pieces in the future, I do want to mention this piece that we're talking about in the video. People can still buy it. It's very limited vintage, and like you said, it's probably going to sell out within a month, so it's kind of like their last shot if they want to get one of the first you know, first editions, um, and where could they find that, hi-ho? Well, if you remember way back, well, I, I was doing it for sure when you started your your channel. Uh, within maybe a year of starting my hi-ho silver YouTube channel, I kind of figured out to do what I wanted to do in the silver stacking world. I needed the ability to easily sell. So I built my own website. It's called tastysilver.com. I'm handling all the sales. It's just me. I do, uh, I do all the shipping. I do everything. It's, it's my site, tastysilver.com. If you go there, you'll see a link. Uh, and you'll be able to find more information and see HD photos and, and uh, some uh, video of the obverse and reverse. Get a really good look. Uh, at the piece and uh, so that's where it's available all right well uh, i don't want to take up 
too much of your time here. Uh, hi ho silver, but I really appreciate you sharing your experience with everyone. And hopefully if there's people out there who are thinking about getting custom stuff made in the future, this will, uh, help them give them some insight on sort of the process and, and how it works. Uh, so I really, really thank you uh, for sharing all of your knowledge with us and also for being just such a great member of the community for so many years. Um, seriously, I really appreciate it. Hi ho silver. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Congratulations to you on all your success. And to all you stackers, dudes, we're, we were just stackers. I think one of the cool things, and, and I'll just kind of wrap up on, on this from my end, uh, Dragons, neither of us could have envisioned, I'm, I assume, I know it's true for me, no clue as I was getting into this silver hobby and silver business kind of thing, uh, where I would be now not it would have never entered my mind as a possibility but by being open to experiences in life and having some sort of an idea of get up in the morning and work hard and and handle things in a moral way and and make yourself available to help others you know life opens up opportunities to us and so uh just keep your heads up i know things are a little tough in lots of arenas right now and uh, if I can do it, you can do it. And you just kind of keep working, man, and love your families, love each other, try to live a good moral life, and things will work out great. Stack on, man. Absolutely. Great message uh, from a great person. Thank you so much. I appreciate the time. Thank you. I appreciate yours, too. And to wrap this one up, I want to say a massive thank you so much to all of you for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one. Silver Dragons, out.